Hey, it's Chris and Hannah. Welcome to the Business with Benefits podcast. Whoop, whoop. And uh, so today's video is going to be really fun. Uh, we did a video yesterday, uh, the last video we did on the rules for fighting fair, and we talked about the three things not to do. If you haven't seen that, go back, watch it. I'll put a link above. Watch that one first, then come back to this because I think it's important to have that context. Now, for today's video, we're going to talk about the five things or five rules of what to do, kind of like I don't know, process or mindset framework uh, to put your head in um, on what to do if you're going to have a fight. Because let's face it, um, we're all going to fight with our spouses every now and then or business partners. I mean, I, I think these rules work in any relationship. In any relationship, you know? yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, taking that into consideration doesn't matter, but we're going to talk about it from the context of, of spouses, um, you know, but it really works for if you have business partners and, and quite frankly we're business partners and spouses, spouses and everything all wrapped into one so it really works for us um, but we talked a lot about yesterday about the importance of trust uh, the importance of um, you know making sure well all the things not to do making sure that we're really um, having the perspective of, of we're trying to accomplish the same thing and making sure that what you're doing is is really trying to uh, Get, is going to get you closer to where you want to go, right? Like that's really what it comes down to. And so I think for us, do you have anything you want to talk about on this before I, you know, we get into it? I'm just kind of rolling right now. I, I just, You're rolling. She's pretty though, right? I mean, she's, you know, she's here. You're so sweet. I'm not always pretty. Well, I wasn't always pretty in a fight and it still isn't pretty. Um, but what we, if you haven't watched the first one, like Chris said, go back and watch it. But what we're establishing is how in a fight we have learned to, and of course we don't mean a physical fight. We never have a physical uh, altercation. It's always verbal. She beats me up sometimes. Yeah, except for that. <laughs> except for that. Just kidding. Disclaimers. Um, but how to create that safe container. We talk a lot about having trust, you know, and I think I heard that all growing up and I didn't mm. know what it meant. No one takes the time to define what it means or to give examples of that. So that's what Chris and I are taking our time this afternoon um, to illustrate. And first, the first thing that is essential for creating the safe container mm. that it's okay to have a fight in because you know you're not going to hurt each other. <laughs> it mm -hmm. reminds me of like the little kids, you know, you put on those huge oversized boxing gloves. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that mm -hmm. and seen that? Mm -hmm. And that's like a parenting technique, you know, especially if you have these two boys that are just at each other's throat. Get the huge boxing gloves let box and let them out. just like go at it until they are both exhausted and sweaty in a heap on the ground with gloves nice. so big that they don't hurt each other, you know? And I think that might be a good metaphor for what we're sure. teaching here is we're not saying avoid topics. We're not saying avoid altercations or avoid confrontation because neither it's, one of you are, neither one of us are afraid of confrontation. It's the opposite of that. Yeah. We're saying get in the ring, y'all get in the ring because you have to hash it out. You don't want to be one of those couples that has built up resentment mm -hmm. and has built up anger, this underlying anger for X number of years, your whole marriage. And those things leak out into your fights because mm -hmm. it's the only time that you feel it's okay to talk about them. Yep. That is, it's toxic for you, for your spouse, for the relationship as a whole. So mm -hmm. we're all about not talking about those things in a fight. Go watch the what not to do's. But what to do is to be willing to address only the, the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. We're not diving back into history, into who was hurt and who did the hurting and what all that crap was. It's right now this particular issue and the whole goal is to have a fight not to hurt one another but to come out with a constructive win for for your relationship and even if it can't be a win it's at least a peaceful resolution mm -hmm. even if you're going to agree to disagree do it peacefully do it without hating each other and being resentful and hurting each other or having to apologize after um and you know we talked a little bit my weapon uh, of choice that naturally was given to me is is the sword in my mouth and I end up using it to cut people without even meaning to um, and so you know it's doing stuff like that like really being careful to make sure that I'm not using my words to hurt or to cut mm -hmm. um, and other people have different weapons so yeah. we're, we're gonna leave the weapons out of the fight and we're gonna fight fair so that we can trust each other and that whatever we say, whatever we're hashing out, no matter how angry or passionate or fired up or loud we are, 
it's still we're still gonna stay safe because yep. we're not gonna hurt one another um, really at a deep level. So how wow. do we actually do that? What's the first mindset that that we adopt? And in our very imperfect marriage, by the way, these are rules that we came up with when we reunited after a separation yep. 12 years ago, and we got to be conscious. So yep. um, and create these. We haven't talked about these in a long time either. It's just kind of been something that we I think do naturally at this point in time for the most part. Yeah. Maybe not always perfectly. No. Um, but we do. And, and I think the one thing that we do really, really well um, is, is the first thing is we, we know that we're on the same team, you know? Um, and from that perspective... And if you don't feel like that in that moment, mm, number one, remind get, yourself, on, the get on the same remind team. Remind yourself that you're on the same team. Remind when you go your into, partner it's kind of like when you're you, on the same team. When you go <laughs> into the field or when you go into a sports game, like you, you have to have a pep talk almost to be like, okay, yeah. I'm going into this. I know this is going to be a battle. I know that we're on other sides of the field and that we're opponents right now, but we're really, even though I feel like an opponent, I know we're on the same team. Um, and, and in order to do that, you have to, you know, there's plenty of professional athletes out there that don't like the people that they're on the team with, but when they hit the playing field, they, they have to agree. They have to, you know, understand that they, they have to work together, all these different things. Now, obviously if you're with a business partner or the spouse, you chose to be with them. Like, so hopefully it, it's not that way with you. Um, but, but at the same time, there's a lot of circumstances where we just feel disconnected from our spouse or, or whatever. And we feel justified or validated in, you know, why we're angry or our emotions or why we're hurt or any of that stuff. And by getting on the same team, I think, a big component of that, and I hope I'm not jumping ahead by saying this, but a big com stick to the numbers. No, but I think this is. Okay. I, I think I think a big component of that is is the trust thing that we're thinking about. Is like I can do that with Hannah because I know that no matter what happens, no matter what it is, she didn't intentionally set out to hurt me, you know. And I hope the same is true for her to me. And <laughs> you know. When, yeah, when you right. know that that's the case, when you truly in your heart know that they didn't intentionally try to hurt you, that allows you to just be a bit more vulnerable and a bit more real and come together to have a more honest conversation. Even if the work, and, and honestly, I think it allows it to, to get more real faster, you know, in, in, a, in a way that you can have almost like harsher conversations as long as you don't cross those lines that we talked about in the last video. But because of the fact that you know that you're just trying to address stuff and you're doing it from the same team and that means we're looking to achieve the same objective mm -hmm. right and you want the relationship to continue yeah. after this fight yes like you whether it's a business partner or or a spouse or whomever else you this it isn't about just this fight like yeah. I used to die on the hill of the one fight even if it ruined my entire relationship because I was like I'm like a bulldog right like once I get the opponent around the neck I couldn't let go and and that's so, so yeah. immature because that's like losing sight of the 30 years <clears throat> of potential you know or whatever x mm -hmm. number of years of potential that you might have that's beautiful with that person but once i was locked in i couldn't let go and um and so starting with putting us on the same team and saying that out loud mm -hmm. <laughs> guess what we're gonna have a we're gonna uh -huh. have a you know knock down drag out right now mm -hmm. verbally but so you know we're going to be on the same team about this and we're here to have a peaceful resolution in the yep. end. So the, like we're, we're creating uh, ground rules. Like we create ground rules for our kids. You know, when you show up at the swimming pool for the, for the it's week like, or for the day, here are the ground rules. No running on the cement, use your inside voice, use your walking feet and we're going to get out of this day. Okay. Like, it's like the referee in the middle of the boxing ring. They bring the boxers together and they say, okay guys, no punches below the belt. No, yes. this like no elbowing, no biting, no like, None of that. Fight. Have right. fun. Like, get after it. Like, right. and that's what they do. And that's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. You got very excited about it's, that. Yeah. Wow. It's okay. a good analogy. So that was I the what not fun. to do stuff. Yeah. But the what to, what to do stuff is about being on the same page. Yeah. Being on the same team. Okay. So yeah. we got number one. Number two is, oh, you should talk about this because you're way better at it. <clears> but it's to listen with the intent to understand the other person. Mm. What in the world? It sounds really woo woo so it's really and way hard. too touchy feely for me, but apparently it's it's the real deal. <laughs> so so, well, I mean, Stephen Covey says it in in business books is seek first to understand, right? Like, I mean, that's that's really what it 
Wait, 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 say it again slowly. Seek first to understand. Before that, expressing our opinion, we yeah. want to understand yeah. where the other person is coming yeah. from. Okay. And, and to do that effectively, it means you have to listen, uh, not cross talk, not try to get your point across. Literally, if it, like, you know, I guess on top of number one, where you know, once you get to the point where you know you're on the same team, come from the perspective of give each other a chance to just say whatever they need to say and just take it in. Don't like if, if in this scenario, if Hannah is ripped at me for whatever reason, cause I screwed up, don't like, I'm going to, I'm going to have to let her have at it and just blow me up and just sit there on my hands with my mouth shut until I taking it, it in until out. she feels like her system's clean. Yeah. You and know? at the same time, my responsibility in that, mm -hmm. in that venting is not to do the things that we did in the last video is just to make sure that in that venting, I'm, I'm not using a weapon. I'm not bringing up the yep. past. I'm not bringing up the stuff he's told me in confidence mm -hmm. and I'm not beating him with something to try to hurt him, right? So outside of those things, I can vent about this particular situation as long sure. as I want to. Mm -hmm. And he's just gonna sit there and grab himself a sparkling water and Seltzer. like, all right, just listen, trying to understand where I'm coming from through yep. the words that I'm saying, through the anger, trying to just understand yep. where I'm coming from. From the, from the thought of like, okay, how am I gonna be able to help this? Mm -hmm. Like when this is all done, when she's done ranting, how am I gonna help this? And then it'll be your turn. And then I'll say, okay, right. I said my piece, thanks for listening, and I will do my best to shut my mouth and let you talk. And then you do the same thing until you're, because, until you're done. Because if you don't do that, it ends up just being this back and forth battle and nobody ever accomplishes anything. You, nobody ever feels heard. Nobody ever feels like they said what they wanted to say in the order that they said it because it becomes, I'm trying to say something and then she cuts me off and tries to defend herself or I'm trying to defend myself or whatever. And then it's this back and forth. And at the end of it, it's like, she didn't communicate what she wanted to communicate. I didn't communicate what I wanted to communicate. Nobody feels like they got anything off their chest. Nobody feels like they've been listened to. Nobody feels heard. Nobody feels anything. And it's impossible to have any sort of resolution unless you really do this. And it's not the easiest thing to do, but it's like one of the most important things to do to start. So once you do that, number three is repeat what you hear them saying. So when Hannah says what she says, and then I say what I say, then you give a back and forth opportunity to say, okay, this is what I heard you say, this is what I heard you say, and you get on the same page with that. And is that right? So after I have done my venting, yeah. then he'll say, okay, what I heard you say is X, Y, Z, and what you'd like from me or what you wanna do to change this is X, Y, Z. Yeah. Is that correct? And yep. then making sure that he was really listening so that I can then adjust that. Because sometimes, you know, he's not going to hear it the same way that I meant for it, or it's not going to come out the same way, or, you know, we all look at life sure. through our own filters. Well, not so only that, that gives the ability for, for you to come out with a mm -hmm. win mm -hmm. because I'm saying to you, okay, I'm going to adjust what you thought you heard. And then we're on the same page about what that is. Same thing. So when you're done talking, I'm like, okay, so what I heard you say was, but and and I'm probably gonna roll my eyes and I'm gonna make that same face and I'm gonna go okay so what I heard you say was bit which I don't agree with but I can I can understand where you're coming from I'm trying I'm trying so what you'd like me to do about this is bit and is that correct and then he's gonna adjust my understanding a little bit or a yep. lot which is usually the case for me and, and then we're gonna both be on the same page about, it's like a business meeting in that way. Like, let's leave with our next steps of action. Everybody has to have that action plan or what are your next yeah. steps when we leave? And then when are we gonna come back and be accountable for that? What are the expectations um, when, we, when we reunite so that we have, clear, we have clarity on what sure. the wins are gonna be? So asking each other, you know, what we think we heard, is that correct, is number three. Yep. And so then number four is just trying to put yourself in their shoes, you know, or like come from their side of the table and look at it from the lenses that they're looking at the situation through. And that, this is one of the hardest I ones to do. that's the hardest. It's yeah. probably because listen, it's kind of like when you're, when you're repeating what they're saying in number three, like the important part for the repeating of it is because when we're listening, I don't care how much you're listening. I can sit there and listen to Hannah and sit on my, you know, 
zip my lips shut and sit on my hands and whatever and hear it all. But emotionally, I'm still thinking all this stuff, right? As I'm listening to it. And I, I'm forced to listen because I'm, I'm shutting up. But I'm still thinking things, right? So emotionally, I may not be taking it all in or hearing exactly what she's trying to communicate. So that's where you repeat it and, and you know, make sure that you're on the same page. And then once you understand that you're on the same page, then you try to like look at it from the other side, look at it from their perspective. Are you seeing it? This, when you do this the right way, even though it's super hard a lot of times, it, it can help give a little empathy, um, you know, to if let's say you were, are, you are the one who was hurt, you know, let's say that that's the case and you are the one who was hurt. Um, if you come at the situation from the perspective of realizing that they didn't intentionally hurt you, mistakes happen, ju bad judgment happens all the time, right? Fair enough? No, you never no. make mistakes. <laughs> That's, what is you talking <laughs> Bad judgment, bad judgment happens Chris all the time. perfect. No, <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just playing. So bad judgment happens all the time, right? And so it's easy in any in any situation where you're the one who got hurt, it's easy to like jump to the conclusion, that, oh, it was done on purpose. But if you come from the perspective of, like I started this with is you, you, you're on the same team and you know that you're coming from a place of trust that the other person did not hurt you intentionally, that allows number four to be a lot easier because it's like you're looking at it from their side and when you can tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna look at this from their side with the full understanding or full belief that they didn't do whatever this transgression, whatever this hurt, whatever this action was to hurt me on purpose. It was a mistake. It was a misjudgment. I got caught up in, I was, you know, crossfire, whatever <laughs> it was, right? That, but that's so important. Why, what's this look for? I'm just thinking of the most recent thing that you've done. <laughs> that I've done? Oh, whatever. <laughs> That was a, a fairly decent sized blunder and just an oversight because your mind is always up in like business building mode and other things. And um, it was it was an opportunity for me to practice grace in that mm. moment because you're really much easier to forgive me and my stupid mistakes. Like when I cost us money, as, you know, hint, hint as a family, when I do things accidentally that cost us money, like forget to return something on time and don't get my money back, something like that. Um, and when you did this recently, it gave me the opportunity to like actually step into grace and to practice that forgiveness. It doesn't make the transgression okay, right. you know? Totally. It still kind of ticks me off, um, but I still love you and we're on the same team and mm -hmm. we're moving towards the same direction and that's the right. most important thing, more yep. than winning this particular fight. Sure. Like I'd rather be happy than right. And mm -hmm. that's a big switch. When I was younger, mm -hmm. I would rather be right than be happy mm -hmm. and I would die on every single hill. I actually got a t-shirt from my grandmother, side note, um, <laughs> when I was, I think probably 10. And she gave me this t-shirt that said, I'm not opinionated, I'm just always right in big, black, bold letters. How old are you? I, I was like 12? 10, I was probably 10. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was about 10. And, um, and I thought it was like, I wore it with pride. Because I thought it was You're for, like, yeah, for duh. Real. See, even grandma says so. <laughs> even grandma says totally. so. Like I completely thought duh. it was Yeah, I was like, yeah, this is, you know, I'm a strong willed, you know, person. And now I realize just how ridiculous that is. I'm never, I'm hardly ever right. And the only thing that I'm really ever right about is that I really don't know what I'm doing more often than not. Yep. And that makes me pretty okay at a lot of the stuff I do because I actually then get help for it and um, and, you know, and that's how we can excel. So anyway, I don't want to be opinionated, super highly opinionated to the point that, Good luck with that. to that I have to always be right though. Yeah. You know, not yeah, always, yeah, sometimes, yeah. but not yeah, always. Yeah. Totally. And I'm not going to diminish you just so that I can be right. Right. So anyway, I think, I think four is the hardest putting yourself on their side mm -hmm. or putting yourself in their shoes. That's the one that doesn't always come to me easiest. So if you got to skip one of these, Skip, skip that one. Skip that one. All right. Then she's, like start yeah. with teamwork, do the things, yep. listen with the intent to understand, repeat what they're saying, ask if you understood, don't try to put yourself on their side if you really can't do it. Like you'll survive without that one. But then number five is? Just work towards common ground and, and a peaceful resolution. You know, this comes back to that. We're on the same team. We want the same result. We're, whatever your marriage is like, I mean, we're really clear on what our goals are as a couple. 
what our goals are with our kids, what our goals are as far as money, what our goals are as far as lifestyle and all that stuff. So it's really clear for us on what we're trying to achieve. Well, we and were before you decided you want to pick up and sell everything and move to Costa Rica. Yes, I know. Well, yeah, but you aren't so far off on that agreement. <laughs> Costa Rica so. does really bad things to yeah, my hair. Yes, so I'm could. really, I'm considering. That's more important to me than like the selling of the house, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's I can't live good. a lifestyle with that. She bad looks hair. really good with her hair up so to me, me. So she could just go and put her hair up every day. It's not my problem. Can't do that every day. So, can't do it. It'll so, fall out. So I'm. I'm teasing. So yeah, we're on board about the big things in life because yeah. we talk about them all. Even if they're instigated by watching TV shows together, mm -hmm. um, that helps you to talk about where are we mm -hmm. today? What are totally. our goals today? How have they changed? Mm -hmm. And how can we make sure that we're on the same page? And so at the end of the fight, you're just, yeah, it's like working towards a common resolution. It's probably like a mediator. Mm -hmm. Y'all are in business. You know, you'd rather go to mediation to solve a, a legal dispute than you would go to court. Why is that? Because in court, it's all or nothing. They're going to prove someone wrong and they're going to lose everything. And they're going to prove someone right who wins the whole grand prize, right? But in mediation, they do it differently. If anyone else has been through this, <laughs> I'm in real estate. So, you know, I've had some, some legal disputes that I've helped represent clients through. In mediation, they're not looking for an all or nothing, win or lose. We're looking to inch towards the middle somewhere. It might not be the middle, but to inch together. It might be closer you to one side or the other. You end up closer than where you started. You end up coming together somewhere, mm -hmm. wherever it is on that spectrum of you know what each party starts in. And and you, you come together for a resolution and then you can both peacefully let it go and move forward. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be you know, rainbows and unicorns, poop and glitter, but it has to be closure that's respectful and you mm -hmm. at least, neither of you feels taken, right, by the by the conclusion. Well, so that's how we try to end our arguments, I, not hating each other. Right. Like, let's put the bar but really I, high. I wanna say this though, I, I wanna say this though, <laughs> we're able joke. to do it. That we're, was a joke. We're able to do this really well because we've taken the time on the front end to get really clear about what our goals are, right? Yeah. So if you don't know what your goals are, if you don't know where you want to go, any road will get you there, right? Like, so it's like, if if you don't know what your goals are and what you want your relationship to be like, what you want your business to be like, and you don't have a vision for that, it can be hard to figure out where is that common ground, right? Mm. For us, it's really uh -huh. easy. Okay, because so advice is to that this will be helpful, but this is a microcosm. Yeah. And you need to kind of like come back to a 10,000 foot view is what I'm hearing you say, I it, think. I don't know if that's right. It could be an opportunity, right. you know. And to work on the big picture of your relationship. Yeah. This is one small aspect of it. Did I, am I understanding that? Yeah, right? I mean, I, I think for us as we're in a fight, and I just thought about this as we were talking about it, for, for us, the four to five transition, so to speak, in these, in these things to do is easy because we're already really clear on where we want to go. And so when we look at it, if I mess up, if she messes up, we both look at it and be like, okay, Chris was an idiot, Hannah was an idiot, like, let's forgive each other because I know he or she didn't do it on purpose, and I know that we ultimately, yes, it's a mistake, yes, we're all human, we're all imperfect, we're all gonna be screw-ups from time to time, and at the same time, we know we're, <laughs> I know that if Hannah screws up, she's not trying to sabotage our entire life and plans and all that stuff on purpose, it was a mistake, right? So. Like at the end of the day, it's see it from her side, then five, try, okay, what's the common ground? How do we come together? So we're getting back on track ultimately. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know what track you're trying to get back on, it could be really hard. So I would say if you haven't done this already, even before a fight, sit down, be intentional, like figure out what, what is, what do you want your life to look like? Like what, what do you want your business to look like if you have a business partnership or uh, what are your visions for everything, for your marriage, for how you're raising your kids, for you know, what you want the next 10 years of your life to look like, you have to have goals. If you don't have goals that you're chasing after and trying to accomplish, and those will change on a regular basis, like we talk about this stuff almost every day, it seems like, you know, anytime we talk, I mean, sometimes we go days without really having a chance to talk that much, we're just ships <laughs> passing in the night, but it's, you know, it, it, that I think is probably a video on its own is the importance of making sure that you're sitting down together and, and you're clear on, goals and visions. I think you talk about that in pretty much every video because that's your 10,000 foot view. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's what it all yeah, boils down to. Being intentional at the front end and being intentional about what your goals are and your visions mm -hmm. so that as you're working through all of these crazy zigzags yep. of life, you're at least, you know, on the same page sure. to get to the end result. So, okay, and, and the other thing I would add too is potentially 
Um, I'm thinking back of the example of like how to wrap this up in a bow from the example that I started with of in the, the last video in the last video of the friend um, of mine that had a, a meltdown, just an emotional mental meltdown from overwhelmed from way too many transitions and just big hard stuff in life and she mm -hmm. completely collapsed and sort of raged and then the the man the new man in her life the fiance came in and was completely unsupportive and was blaming and judgmental and used very cutting words and broke all the rules the opposite of everything the opposite about. of everything like he brought up the past he diminished her he just oh it was ugly mm -hmm. so you know, if, and so when you're saying, know that your spouse isn't always trying to hurt you, if that is not the truth, mm. if that is not the truth for you, that you're, you may be trying to hurt your spouse. And guys, I'm not judging you. This is who I was my whole life until I stepped into recovery. Okay. I was the one, and I've admitted this, this whole video, I was the one who tried to cut him until he just couldn't fight anymore against me so that I was victorious. Mm -hmm. I get what that's like. Okay. I'm not judging you because of it. But it feels a whole lot better to now know that I can trust myself mm. and that we can fight in a productive way and that I'm not going to hurt the person that I love. And so how do you do that? The way that Chris did it in our implosion situation many years ago and the thing that would help this guy in the situation is to learn about the struggle that your spouse is facing. Mm. Um, you know, he needs to learn about mental illness, mental health issues. He needs to learn about alcoholism and the brain and the, the way that we see the world um, and, and how it's an illness within us, even if we're in recovery, you mm -hmm. know? And so that's what you did with me and you learned that, that my mm -hmm. addictive tendencies or my addictive illness inside of me is not who I am. It's a disease that I'm constantly working against and with the grace of God every day, I'm offered a daily reprieve from that um, that's contingent on the maintenance of my spiritual condition. And you learned that by picking up every book on addiction that you could. Mm -hmm. And if he did that, if you do that, and you're willing to learn about that struggle, whatever that is for your spouse, then you may be more empowered to not come at them from a place of hurt, but find a place of compassion and empathy. And then you know that's how you actually achieve the goal of having a peaceful resolution that will walk your relationship, um, you know, continually down the road instead of imploding in this big fiery and, bomb. And what I think is so cool <laughs> is when you do this the right way, people's fights are typically really scary to people because we're so concerned about the outcome. We're so concerned about mm -hmm. like the stability of the relationships because let's face it, in most relationships, fight lead to division, right? Fights lead to division. And when you get to the place where you don't fear the fight, mm. you can lean into it. You can be real with each other. You can address yeah. things. One of the things that That's blows so marriage one of the things that blows marriages up and partnerships up is hidden resentment because you're not willing to deal with this because you're scared of the result that's gonna come from it. So you try to avoid it. And then it's like a pressure valve and then the whole engine explodes. And so, yeah. you know, in this scenario, like if you can get to this place where you're able to have these conversations, you're, 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 I mean, we're comfortable leaning into a good fight at this well, point in time. And, and, and it doesn't have to happen when, when you know, when you go about it this way, A, the fights don't really happen as often as they would otherwise. B, when they do have to happen or, or they're necessary, they're not as bad as you would think they would be because you trust each other. Like you get they blow through over it. pretty quick. They blow over so really quick. So how quickly. do people do that? I think one way to, to maintain that is to assure your business partner or your spouse at the beginning of the confrontation that look, we're going to hash this out at the end. We're going to get to a positive resolution. And mm. no matter how this fight ends up, I still love you and I still want to be with you and I'm not yeah. going anywhere. Yeah. Okay, so tell your partner that. And that's one mm -hmm. thing you've done really well. Yeah. You've said to me, I'm not going anywhere. No matter if you hit depression, no matter if you struggle with alcoholism, no matter if you blow up business, no matter what it is that you do, I'm mm -hmm. here and I'm not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. We have to use our words. We have to tell our partners. I have toddlers, sorry. You have to tell your partner that, business partner or uh, relationship you know, spouse. They don't just know, y'all. They don't just know that you're not leaving, okay? Just because you've been there for a long time, maybe even, doesn't mean that you're going to continue to stay. And saying it once isn't enough. Saying you got to constantly enough. affirm. At the beginning of them. every one of these conflicts, that's totally. we get on the same page. We probably should have also said, get on the same team and tell them you're not going anywhere. We could add that. Okay. <laughs> Check. Anyway, thank y'all for coming to join us. Um, if you have comments. If you have questions, if you resonate with something that we said, if you have questions, reach out to us. 
we are just here to offer a little bit of experience, strength, and hope for marriages, and particularly marriages that have some businessy component to them, based on the, the really painful and hard experiences that we've had, sure. and that we've figured out how to get intentional to build from the ground up. Um, and you know, we have an imperfect but pretty darn awesome marriage now. We just celebrated our 15th anniversary. Yep. And uh, like every day we're just stronger, I feel like, because we've been so intentional. And you can do that in your relationship too. No matter where you are, no matter the starting place, no matter you know what mm. storms are raging around you, I and we believe there's always redemptive power around us. So seek help, go ask uh, for some counseling or some outside help and uh, let us know if there's anything we can do to help you. One of the, one of the greatest quotes that I, I heard a long time ago is in regards to business, but I think it, it resonates with relationships as well, is that people way overestimate what they can do in a year, but way underestimate what they can do in a decade. And when you apply that to this, you don't have to, like, it, sometimes when things are bad, it's really hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's hard to see the hope. It's hard to see that things will change, especially with the other person. Mm -hmm. I can tell you she's a perfect example. We're like a great example of our relationship, our life as individuals, completely different than we were 15 years ago. I never could have envisioned it. But if you just, yeah. if you make a fraction of a percentage of an improvement on a daily basis by being intentional, yeah. 10 years from now, your life can look like, heck, two years from now, your life can look like what you could never imagine. And that's, that's so good. Well, and so. to your credit, you've lived that too. Yours have been different improvements, sure. but it's been things like you now take out the trash and you now pay most of the bills on time and maintain things that are yeah. householdy that you didn't do just to get personal yeah, yeah, yeah. for a second. Yeah. Every one of us has those areas that we need to keep working on. Mm -hmm. And it's been a 15 year journey towards that, but sure. you have inched your way yep. <laughs> over 15 years yep. to improvement. And so oh. now you're like 90, 5% better than you were mm -hmm. and but it doesn't happen in a day So I expected that back then in our youth mm -hmm. and that that was a letdown yep. So now I just expect a little teeny tiny micro improvement in me and in you each day and eventually we'll end up being um, You know halfway decent human beings cool. So awesome. All right guys. Well have have an amazing day have a blessed inspirational one and um if you haven't already, I uh, would love uh, if you subscribed and that way you get notified every single time we launch these. We're going to try to get back to doing these on a semi-regular basis. Subscribe and basis. hit the bell to get notified. Hit the bell yeah. to get notified. And you know what? Sorry. We don't make, you know, like this is not a for-profit situation that we're doing, guys. We're taking sure. the time uh, out of our days to just to serve and do mm -hmm. these videos. If you could repay it in some way, the only thing we would ever ask is that you share it with someone else who might mm -hmm. be struggling in their marriage, someone who needs a little hope, someone totally. who could use some tools and some skills. It really is a cool way to show uh, to show them love, and it's not about us; it's about them. So, um, totally. All right, guys. Together we can do this. Takes a village. <laughs> All right, we'll see you. See you on the next video. Bye. Have fun.